Okay, good morning. Today is March 22nd, 2019. My name is Judith Jenkins. I'm a volunteer with the Hanford Branch of the Kings County Library Veteran History Project. Would you please state your full name? My name is uh, David Aramis Montoya, Jr. Good morning, Mr. Montoya. How are you this morning? Doing Glad well, thank you. Join us. Thank you very much for having me. We'd like to start today's interview with a little ba background information from you first. Where are you originally from? I was uh, born and raised in Visalia, California. Okay, okay. Um, are your parents still still with us? Uh, they they are. They both are. My uh, my father lives in Elk Grove, California. Mm -hmm. um, he's about to retire. He's uh, law enforcement all his life, okay. and uh, my mother is working at the Sacramento Children's Home in, in Sacramento. They're both remarried. Okay. Do you have any uh, siblings and how many? I do have a younger sister um, mm -hmm. and she is about 26 right now. And she's okay. living up in Sacramento as well. Oh, Sacramento? Okay. Correct. Um, so you just have the one sister. Okay. Did she serve also? Uh, no, she did not. She kind of steered away from, uh, from our line of work, I guess. My father's law enforcement and uh, wanted to join the Air Force and okay. then that's kind of why I joined. So. Uh -huh. So what did you do before you served? Uh, before I served, I worked as a youth mentor with the Tulare, Tulare County Office of Education, uh, reconnecting youth program uh, with the Choices program uh, Adam Valencia out there. Um, they do uh, at-risk youth uh, gang prevention type work. Um, so I was a mentor there for a couple years. And uh, I, did, I had to do 12 units in college because I took my California high school proficiency exam. Okay. So I got out of high school my junior year. Okay. And because of that, I needed 12 units of college before I could enlist. Okay. Okay, right. And what branch did you serve in again? I was with the uh, United States Air Force. Oh, with the Air Force, okay. So you were enlisted, not drafted then, correct? Correct. correct. Okay, what year was that? Uh, it was August of uh, 2007. Okay. What inspired your choice of branch? Um, I was thinking about the Air Force uh, when I first was considering joining because my father had always talked about it. Um, he actually wanted to uh, join the Air Force. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't because I was born, so he uh, oh. decided to work full time and stay in Visalia with me. Um, but uh, yeah, honestly, at the time, I was just uh, wanting to get away, of course, after 9-11, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to join um, for sure, so I had gone down the line of recruiting stations, um, but the Air Force at the time had the quickest ship date. Um, so I got my 12 units and the Air Force said they could send me and okay. that's where I went. Excellent. So how was your boot camp experience with the Air Force? Uh, boot camp, uh, probably get a lot of crap from other people, but uh, boot camp was pretty easy because okay. it's Air Force. Yeah, okay. I know guys, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't too bad besides uh, lack of sleep and uh, a lot of running, so. Alright, so you were able to adjust pretty good? Yes. Okay, so tell me about your DIs or your other instructors in the Air Force. Uh, my uh, training instructor was uh, pretty new to that career field, so um, he had a lot to prove. Um, I didn't hear about that till after we graduated, but uh, okay. he seemed a lot more strict than the other TIs around. Um, I know all instructors are in, or they're expected to be pretty strict and, and fierce and mean, but uh, this one just stood out a bit, and it, yeah, it turns out he had a lot to prove, so I think we kind of benefited from it. Excellent. That's a positive experience. Yes. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about your military life and your adjustment to it. Uh, the, I think the biggest adjustment was uh, moving to South Georgia, because uh, mm -hmm. coming from California, I uh, mm -hmm. moved to Valdosta, Georgia, and at the time I uh, graduated from tech school, I had orders to Korea. Okay. And I uh, was excited to go overseas, but uh, the Air Force had put together um, the 820th, and they're basically the Air Force's answer to light infantry. So it's uh, you know, Marines and Army have their infantry and Navy and Air Force aren't really known for their uh, ground tactics, um, but the 820th was specifically designed for that. So it was uh, six months training stateside, six mm -hmm. months deployed, come back, train, deploy. Um, so Very there was, serious. yeah, mm -hmm. so they rotated out and there was uh, two females uh, that were in my uh, boot camp course. Um, in my training flight and they had orders to the 820th and I saw them crying and I asked what was wrong and like oh no we're going to we're going to the 820th we're going to be in Iraq by next month and 
So I said, hey, can I swap your orders? And yeah, they, they started crying. They were so grateful. So I ended up being able to swap. So You, you swapped? Yeah, I swapped. Um, I graduated tech school in okay. January right. of uh, 2008. Okay. And I went to Valdosta, Georgia in mm -hmm. February. Mm -hmm. And I was in Iraq in March. Wow. Yeah. So that was uh, honestly the biggest adjustment. But uh, Training came easily to me. Um, mm -hmm. I think my father being in law enforcement and kind of sharing, you know, tactics and procedures and, you know, how to go about certain um, scenarios. I think I, I took a lot of that in um, because I wanted to join that career field. Okay. So a lot of that to me was kind of second nature, muscle memory type stuff. Okay. So okay. honestly, um, adapting to the military and being deployed was easy. It was, uh, it was when I came back that I had a hard time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when you're on leave, mm -hmm. hope we had that, what did you do on leave? Uh, my first set of leave, I had actually had my grandfather's funeral. Um, mm -hmm. I had to come back and he passed away right after, uh, yeah, right after I got stationed. So he wasn't uh, too big of uh, me joining the military because he was all about education and uh, I, I respected that. But uh, LAC told me he was proud and I came back for that. and. Um, yeah, a lot of time was spent. The, my first set of leave was spent trying to see my family, but once I deployed, uh, I just stayed with my brothers. Um, okay. It was easier to detach from family, and it was easier to not see family during leave because it didn't make it that much harder when we were deployed. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And I hear, too, that, that when you are deployed, sometimes trying to fight for leave, especially if you want to come back to the States, is yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. You can't, your leave's not always guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, and then also you have... Uh, you have actual leave where you can leave the area and then you have R&R. &R. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sometimes you're restricted to a certain radius right. um, that you can't leave. So wow. and it just made it easier to just expect to stay in Georgia. Okay, did you do any like traveling? I mean, within? Not with, yeah. Um, the most traveling I did was in route to Iraq. Um, okay. And some of my best experiences, uh, on the way to Iraq, we stopped in Ireland, um, mm -hmm. stopped in Iceland. Um, I think we are in England for a layover. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was great. It was, we didn't have too much time there, but it was great yeah. to kind of see that scenery. Um, okay. Kind of a little mad with the, with the commander on the way back because we came back from Iraq and we were taken to Ireland and told, you know, you got a two beer limit, so go ahead and enjoy this beautiful <laughs> Ireland nice. country with all these pubs, but uh, don't have too much fun, so. <laughs> that was nice. But it, yeah, it was nice. So your specialized training, I'm sorry, again. After boot camp, your specialized training was how much longer for your tech school? Uh, tech school okay. was from, let's see, I went in in August, I uh, came out of basic training in October, mm -hmm. and then from October to January was a tech school. Um, okay. And that was just for security forces, but okay. then uh, I had another set of training once I got, I didn't get too much of it because we went straight to Iraq after, but mm -hmm. um, the next year I had a lot. I had. Uh, While you're still in Iraq? No, once I came back from Iraq oh, is when I got, okay. yeah, because the 820th, um, and they're starting to integrate a lot of the branches now. Um, mm -hmm. So 820th is probably the only set of Air Force guys that you'll see wearing Army Ranger tabs. Um, I actually have more Army medals than I have Air Force because I was oh. attached with the uh, Army. Okay. Um, we were able to go to Airborne, um, Counter Sniper, I went to Joint Forward Observer, um, Call for Fire training. And I went with Marines and Army. Um, then I had uh, evasion and conduct after capture um, training where they took us to Washington and they put bags over our heads and they beat the crap out of us for a little bit. And uh, it was just um, training. So if you ever got captured, you know how to how to hold yourself and keep your bearing okay. when you're when you're yeah you're a hostage. So the whole goal is to you got to maintain your set of intel and you can't give away information. Right. So if you were hostile and I was here, you know, I'm supposed to give um, certain little hints saying that I'm okay. So I may okay. say something like uh, my unit's uh, call sign was safe side. So I'd say, hey, you know, um, I'm glad to be over here on the safe side of, of the area. So just try to give little hints to your, to your people back home. Um, okay. Hopefully I can say that. I'm not too sure if I'm giving too much training away, but. No, that's, that's just fine. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, so what years did you serve again? I, don't I served from uh, August 2007, 2007 and I came out uh, November 19th of 2010. Okay, okay. Um, 
your assignment? So I would say, how would you say about this, your assignment? Was your assignment like close to the actual fighting? Were you out there in front because you yeah, we, um, you had after your Yeah, and this is one of those things again with the Air Force. Um, people don't expect it too much, but you guys can look it up if you don't believe me. Um, yeah, I was assigned with the uh, A20S Security Forces Group. Um, overseas, we were with the 887th um, Expeditionary Security Forces, and we were attached with the 179th, um, I think, Battalion for Army. And uh, our missions were, or my mission in the beginning, I was a uh, scout gunner, heavy gunner. Mm -hmm. So we run four truck convoys doing IED um, route clearance. Okay. So we were outside the wire, uh, we were off base. Um, constantly just looking for roadside bombs. So if you guys have seen Hurt Locker, it was a lot of that. Um, detainee transfers, IED sweeps, we did source meets. Um, constant with the Army and then with the British RAF units as well. Okay. I was gonna say, you can go up to the part that's classified, you don't have this. Oh, okay, yeah. Trouble here. No, yeah, that's okay. fine. All right, uh, what are, what is, so what were some of your stressors? Why you uh, there, yeah. it's, my stressor was, uh, as soon as they put me in front, um, as the gunner, it was right. weird. It's you have your four truck convoys and you got your gunners up top. You're looking for roadside bombs, so um, it was everybody's responsibility to kind of you know look and try to stop something from happening. But um, myself being in the front and being the first truck and up top, I felt like I had every member of my squad's life depending on you right so if i you know if i missed something um and it blew up after um, that was always something i was afraid of um, responsibility. yeah so i think in the beginning i was kind of um not over hyper vigilant um so i would uh anything i see it's like a piece of trash on the road i'd be like stop stop and yes. then there's constant a lot of that and, um yeah, I always was worried about that in the beginning, but I was told, you know, it's better safe than sorry, so. Yes, yes. Yeah. You can't be too careful. Right. Yeah. So how, I mean, if you looked at the whole picture altogether, how would you say that your experiences in the military, especially where you're assigned and what mm -hmm. you're doing, have an impact in your life as today? Um, mentally, mm -hmm. I have a bigger, stronger sense of um, responsibility, I guess, for the people that are around me. Um, my situational awareness is something that I think I try to keep in tune a lot. Um, it's affected me in negative ways also a bit. Um, for instance, driving when I came back because of all that. I had a harder time driving in the States because one of my first experiences was driving my truck on a civilian highway and I saw a tire on the side of the road and I immediately just you know wanted to break my truck and oh. I almost caused an accident and wow. it's it's having to adjust to that so honestly after the first deployment um, I bought a brand new truck uh, with my money that we had got or I had got and uh, my best friend was driving it for me so I was sitting passenger I didn't want to drive um, for a bit so I think so I did adjust after that yeah but um, everything else I think the camaraderie and brotherhood um, mm -hmm. A lot of that stayed intact, and then I ended up working um, security after, so I kind of stayed in the same realm of, uh, of work, so. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about your military friendships. Tell me a little bit more. Do you have special ones, or are you part of a group, or? Um, I have very strong friendships. I just haven't, uh, well, actually, I think I would, I've gotten in touch with a lot of them. Um, okay. We're very close. Uh, okay. My buddies and I drank together, slept together separately. So, um, they're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so they're out like you? Yeah, um, okay. no, well some of them are out, some of them stayed oh, in. Okay. Um, one of my best friends, I actually uh, stopped him from committing suicide um, when we got back and now he works in insurance so I'm actually getting ready to, to talk to him about taking out an insurance policy. Um, my other buddies are instructors in El Paso, okay. Texas. Um, Good close friends, so it's when I got out, anything that happened to us, it's, uh, yeah, if it affects me, it affects them. Um, yes. I post on Facebook now more often, and uh, our biggest thing, and I'll talk about it later, is uh, uh, awareness for veteran suicide. Um, okay. We had a couple brothers kill themselves. Um, one took their life before deployment, and we had to push on and do our jobs without them after, that was kind of hard to adjust to. 
and then a couple took their lives after and then we just found out of course through social media and that's a horrible thing to do but uh, we're all trying to stay in touch and um, yeah I mean they're, they're brothers then and it doesn't stop just because we get out or just because we don't wear the uniform so excellent uh, so do you take, stay in touch with your family I, so. Yes, I, uh, I do. I stopped for a bit. Um, I think I lost a sense of pride when I got out of the military. Um, it's not, I thought that others seen, or viewed me differently, but it was really I viewed myself differently. Um, so because of that, I kind of pulled away from my family, thought they weren't as proud of me. Um, so I didn't talk with my family for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and it was actually until last year. I started reconnecting. Um, I spent Thanksgiving with my family. Um, just got re or yeah, just got married with my wife. Um, I was going to turn the camera, but I don't want to get in trouble. Um, so yeah, uh, my family's been there. Uh, my grandmother, I just saw this morning because I wanted to pick up this painting that she made of me. And uh, um, yeah, everybody's proud, and we're still all keeping in touch now. Okay, so now you have a warm and fuzzy with all your family, and so mm -hmm. that's positive as well as your friendship with your, your former uh, and your current military uh, friends. So mm -hmm. that's always a positive too. Yes. That's a good balance. So do you have any specific memories about your service that you went through that really just stand out? It could be positive or it could be negative, uh, but that still may stand out in your memory. Standing out would be, uh, I got my top two wisdom teeth taken out in Iraq. Um, no anesthetics, just with pliers. And uh, I had to go work a 12-hour shift right after, um, so that always stands out. Um, of course, <laughs> my brother uh, John Gaines that took his life um, before Buka II that stands out. And then my first combat experience um, was being out in patrol um, outside. It was outside the wire of Camp Buka um, a little bit before Basra and we were doing a route clearance and we stopped on a IED that I found. Um, so we had to do our security cord on and then we called the Brits in um, to bring... Is explosive? Yeah, it's okay. an improvised explosive device. Okay. Um, once we stopped, uh, we immediately started taking fire mm -hmm. and that was my first experience and it freaked me out because I none of us knew where it was coming from. So okay. it's, we were looking for muzzle flash and all we heard is the bing bing and you know yeah. you hear the whistling and I just remember just turning my head and I probably just looked like a little bobblehead up there and it's just like I didn't know where it was coming from, I didn't right. know where to shoot. You um, spot? Yeah and then we had the Brits coming in but uh, yeah I think uh, training ended up kicking in and after I got an Army Accommodation Award for that so that one stands out. Yeah that was my next question, uh, what kind of awards are medals? Or citations and citations did you obtain um, during your service? I have. Aside from uh, just yeah, marksman medal. <laughs> yeah, I got my army accommodation medal, okay. army achievement medal as well from Excellent. being deployed. Um, I have Air Force Good Conduct medal. Excellent. And then I was submitted for an Air Force achievement. Um, that was bittersweet because that was after I stopped my my buddy Justin from killing himself. Mm -hmm. I ended up uh, handcuffing myself to him until the paramedics came. So I was submitted for a medal for that, but uh, I'm glad I didn't get that one because it would have felt weird. Um, but yeah, those are a few of them. Um, do you recall... Okay. Um, ah, here's something. Did you continue your education? Uh, well, yeah, when I got out, um, I got out in 2010, November. Um, I moved back with my first wife at the time. Mm -hmm. um, in 2012, I came back to California. Okay. And I uh, enrolled at Sacramento City College, and I was there for about a year and a half, mm -hmm. and I stopped at that point, um, but right now I have 60 units of uh, college coursework, and I'm a math class away from my associate's degree, so, so math class isn't my strong point, so which is why I don't have my degree right now, but, okay. um, but yeah, I definitely did start it. and. Uh, I'm going to finish that soon. So is this uh, being supported with the GI Bill? Um, Say yes. <laughs> I received a uh, general under honorable conditions discharge. Okay. Um, there was an incident that, just in summary, there's an incident that went down when we were downrange. downrange. Um, uh, yeah, one of my members 
threatened uh, another member of my fire team and we had to disarm him. Um, we all received paperwork for that and uh, wasn't too much on the good side of the commander at the time. Um, kind of a long story, but in short, um, I was discharged under honorable conditions, but because of that, I don't have access to my GI Bill. Um, and that kind of goes with my losing my sense of pride. Um, it's probably not the good part of the story, but uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I didn't get enrolled with VA Healthcare until 2017, and mm -hmm. I've been out since 2010. Mm -hmm. And I didn't consider myself a veteran um, mm -hmm. all that time in between, just because mm -hmm. I was denied access to that. Um, but that's not true, guys. Um, if you serve, you serve. If you deploy, you deploy, and nobody can take that away from you. So. Uh, Definitely don't let that stuff bring you down. Um, I let that bring me down and I barely got out of that. So that's, um, I'm doing great right now, but uh, yeah, in between 2010 and 2017, it was a pretty dark time. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't, or I haven't been using that, but, um, but yeah, my wife though, um, who is furthering her education on her own um, because she's not needing her GI Bill and because she loves me very much is actually going to transfer her GI Bill to me so I can finish my schooling. So, Wonderful. props to my wife, Raina. I love you. Thank you. Wonderful. Kudos to your wife. So, um, since you have spoken about re, re uh, attaching to your family, so mm -hmm. now that you feel that there is a more positive reception between you and your loved ones at home, mm -hmm. your family members at home. Okay, that's good. Um, can you describe any other readjustments to civilian life you have other than the, uh, when you tell me about the group of people that you have formed together to help other veterans or other people who need support so that they can enhance their life and not think negatively about it? The new group that you said that, that you had listed earlier. Okay. Um... Can you say that one more time, please? Okay, with the uh, group that you said of, um, earlier, mm -hmm. the group of people that you're working with or working for okay. to help other, and I believe you said maybe uh, other military people who uh, have problems with your Oh, what I'm doing now? Exactly. Okay. Could you um, explain it a little bit deeper? Okay. A little bit um, deeper? Yeah, right now, uh, well, actually in 2017, I got. Uh, or my wife and I got linked up with Our Heroes Dreams. Um, okay. So they're a local nonprofit organization um, headed by Justin Bond. I'm pretty sure most of you, um, or yeah, I'm pretty sure the city of Hanford uh, is pretty, pretty aware of who he is. Um, but he was an army sergeant um, that was wounded downrange and he lost his leg and he started this veterans nonprofit organization. And he's also uh, works alongside with Team 43 for uh, President Bush. Okay. Um, that organization was specifically put together to uh, help veterans um, dealing with PTSD and uh, yeah, PTSD, suicide, um, at risk. Um, so when he got in touch with us, we're at a bad point of our life. Um, and uh, his biggest thing is getting, getting veterans off the couch. Um, so they pulled us in, um, actually helped us with uh, room and board at a motel. They took us on a healing retreat. Um, took us to a baseball game, uh, just got, yeah, just really uh, involved with us, and that was my first experience with vets. I always knew the military, in-service, uh, structure, brotherhood, but I never experienced that outside, so it's Justin right. Bond and Our Heroes Dreams that actually showed, you know, that people do care about veterans when you're out, and uh, he did care about what was going on in our life. Um, so this is nonprofits. Yeah, so I started working with them after, of course, we got our situation better personally, and then I was uh, serving on his warrior board, um, and we were reaching out to other vets, um, anybody dealing with PTSD, substance abuse. Um, we worked and did events for uh, you know Veterans Day, Memorial Day stuff. Um, reached out to some of the schools here in in, uh, in Hanford. Um, I actually climbed Mount Whitney with them uh, in support of veteran suicide awareness. Um, and then last year, our, our, one of our mentors, Darren Clayton, who's with Our Heroes Dreams, um, actually brought my wife and I to AMBETS um, this last year. So we got involved with AMBETS post-8293 here in Kings County. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually the uh, current second vice commander um, now. So a lot of that work is with programs like homelessness, suicide prevention, 
Um, my wife just started the uh, first junior AMVETS program in the state of California. Um, we just, yeah, she just did that March 10th, and because of that great achievement, uh, we got married that day. Wonderful. Wonderful. And, um, is yeah. there access on site that people who are interested in this program Absolutely. can get a hold of or people? Or yeah, there's uh, in the internet. Is it post 1893, babe, or AMVETS? AMVETS post. Yeah, AMVETS post 1893.org. Um, okay, thank you for and sharing. Then, yeah, and then also we are also, uh, yeah, now we're uh, not allowed, but we've just been authorized to have access to the Veterans Hall here. So now it's going to be Wonderful. sharing access with BFW and American Legion here. You can stop by, um, give us a call. And uh, yeah, we have junior AMVETS programs. Uh, gonna set up Sons of AMVETS, Ladies Auxiliary. Uh, get looking to start a writer's program. Um, so yeah, if you wanna get involved or you have issues with suicide or you know a vet in need, and uh, just like me, I'll take you out to the gym. We can go rucking, boxing, whatever you wanna do. It's just, uh, yeah, come talk to us. Excellent. Um, so at this time, I wanted to uh, acknowledge the fact that you wanted to share uh, a picture that was created for you um, by um, some My of your family, your grandmother. Could you share yeah. that with us right now, please? Yeah, this is uh, this is from a portrait of myself on my first deployment. Um, yeah, and I was actually sitting in the turret um, of the truck, so this is exactly what I looked like um, mm -hmm. sitting up top looking for IEDs and. Uh, yeah, I just, I broke down in tears when I saw it because just the detail that she put in and the fact that it looks like me and uh, like the picture I'd sent, it's, I, I think she took a sense of pride in um, what I was doing. So yeah, it's my important thing that I have for her. So I wanted to Thank share that. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, future generations uh, will probably see this interview at some point. Um, what would you like them to know specifically from your experience? What would I like them to know, or who would I like them to know? What would you like oh, them okay. to know that you learned from your experience? Uh, from my experience is um, give it all you got. Um, remember why you joined in the first place, I think, for me, is the most important. Um, a lot of people most likely joined after 9-11 because of 9-11, um, and I think it's important to keep sense of that. Um, yeah. When you join the military to serve and uh, you're doing what you're doing because of what you believe, I assume. So it's uh, once you're in, that's what you're doing. Um, you know, these benefits and things that we get as veterans after, we're not entitled to it. It's not something that we're owed. Um, it's just appreciation, I think, that we get. So I think it's important to keep that in perspective. Um, you know, we went or we choose to serve our country to choose or to serve our country. So it's, it's not. Um, you don't go to Iraq so you can come back and get a paycheck for your rent. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to remember why we serve and be there for each other um, and pay attention, uh, especially after. It's a lot of people are in need of help and support and a lot of people, especially our brothers and sisters in the military, are going through things and we assume that just because we've had that training mm -hmm. and we can do a job downrange that we know how to deal with things when we come back and that's not the case. So mm -hmm. it's uh, just keep keep looking after uh, each other. That's the best thing I could say. And if you can't, or you don't want to, or you need help, uh, yeah, give me a call. Okay, uh, one more question we have to ask you here. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? And specifically, I'm talking about the youth. As far as... Um, I mean, you gave an overall answer, but yeah. if you were counseling one-on-one -on -one youth. Okay, and say that's looking at? Yes. Join the military? Yes. Um, Listen to your parents, um, you know, if, uh, yeah, military is about developing um, your bearing, your structure, you got to have foundation, you're going to be told what to do, you're going to be told where you're going, you're going to be told how to do things, how to dress, um, and you don't get to ask, you, yeah, you, don't, you can ask why, but uh, the why doesn't matter, so it's, uh, if you can't listen to your parents, or if you have a hard time, you know, taking direction in school, you might want to rethink that because the uh, military is going to fix that for you and I'm not discouraging you from that. I'm challenging you guys to, uh, yeah, to go ahead and, and still move into that, of course. And uh, it goes back with what I said before. Make sure if you're going to serve or you're looking at serving, make sure you know why. Um, and keep in mind the things that you may give up or the things you may have to put on hold. Um, but if that's what you want to do, then uh, I think everybody supports you and just uh, yeah, give it all you got. 
Well, I think that's... Stay that's, in school, though. <laughs> and if you go in, finish school. That's it in a nutshell. And um, it's very good. I still... It, it's, a, it's a very good blessing that you have learned so much in the military. And it sounds like that you have changed this, helped formulate who you are today. And the Thank fact you. that you have... Um, so much more that you can help others, that you found a, best, a vehicle, in other words, to work with others, mm -hmm. to not only um, keep, to do something positive for youth or for men and women, and also be a very positive impact on the future, which is uh, the youth of today, and youth of today need uh, more structure, and they need right. to know people like you, to hear what you have to say, to know that you've lived through this and how it affects and changes their lives so that they can have a more balanced uh, uh, vision of what they want to do for the future in their lives. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Okay, so um, Mr. Ayers, I want to thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. Okay. And above all, I want to thank you for your service to this country. Thank you. You're and welcome. your interview has uh, given us a lot of food for thought, but also a lot of information that now that the other veterans seeing this uh, interview and listening to what you shared with us may have even a different door of access to uh, opportunities to help where they are now. Okay. So it's, it's important, the different issues you were talking about, the PTSD, whatever, that uh, are being addressed now, but to actively talk to somebody who's in a program mm -hmm. that's trying to grow and it sounds like it is still growing. It's okay. very important for to be for people to get access because if they don't know where they can go to get access, then it's I think it's just one more loophole that, that right. the government has us fall through because we don't know. Yeah. That's so cool. um, mind if I add one more thing? Go right ahead, please. Okay. Um, twenty two veterans take their lives a day. Um, that's the number right now for veteran suicide. Um, so yeah, every single day there's at least 22 veterans that are killing themselves. Um, so we want to bring awareness to everybody and that's not just citywide, countywide, statewide, that's to everybody in the nation and that should be for veterans and civilians as well. Um, so like I said, look out for people. Um, pay attention to the signs. Uh, people withdraw or if they isolate themselves, they might be in need of your help. and. Uh, our Heroes Dreams, AMVETS, American Legion, uh, West Care, Central Valley Veterans, San Joaquin Valley Veterans, There's uh, those are just some of the resources that you can reach out to. And uh, the great thing about those is if they don't know how to take care of something um, specifically, they're going to point you in the right direction. So it doesn't matter what you need or where you need to go as far as services. Um, contact one of those places and you're going to get the help you need for sure. So thank you. Do you have to be a trained in um, specific parts of like medical, like a medical specialist in order to join an organization such as the Stand Up Others? Um, no. Like it's, your MLS, you know? No, um, American Legion, um, it's usually just uh, honorable discharge, uh, general um, with honorable conditions. Um, some of them may have criteria like being a son, granddaughter, um, junior of a veteran. Um, <laughs> But no, it's uh, you can be a vet, you can be a family of a veteran. It doesn't matter what, uh, where you worked, um, how long you wore the uniform. It's uh, somebody who served, served, and uh, yeah, look into it. It's everybody's qualified, most likely, uh, one way or another. Okay, thank you very much for all that information. I'm sure it's, it will be well applied, and uh, just do on this about this interview. You probably get more people who will be contacting you okay. to either help or to volunteer or to want to work with this organization. Awesome, looking forward to it, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. All right.